anonymous has a message for you. It was tech news the whole time! <laughs> NVIDIA may be preparing to launch a GeForce RTX 3090 Super graphics card what? because according to a company spokesman, the past year and a half hasn't been dumb enough. That's obviously a joke, kind of like the idea of an RTX 3090 Super in this economy. It's not enough dumb in there. So the rumor comes from a couple of Twitter leakers with a decent track record for these kinds of things. Greymon, <laughs> of all the Digimon, he's my favorite, Greymon55 and Copite7Kimi, who both claimed that the upcoming card will have a fully maxed out GA102 GPU with 10,752 CUDA cores, compared to the measly 10,496 CUDA cores in the boring, regular, limp, broke dick version of NVIDIA's current top tier card. What is this, Bush League? <laughs> If you can find one, the 3090 is usually going for around 2,500 US dollars right now. So it's totally understandable that Nvidia would produce a slightly more powerful version because you idiots will buy it. Yeah, James will you man. stop? No, that's their time. My cousin has one, he's nice. Apple has agreed to a settlement in a two year long lawsuit that will have major ramifications for the iOS app store and consequently, Epic Games lawsuit against the company. There's two lawsuits, guys. This lawsuit was brought by a small group of developers complaining about the App Store's anti-steering rules, forbidding communication with users about payment options outside of the App Store. Under this settlement, iOS apps will now be able to directly tell users that they can go buy digital goods on the developer's website instead, <coughs> avoiding Apple's 30% revenue cut. 30% of what? Nothing. <laughs> In, they got information now. Obviously, Apple's trying to spin this as a generous decision on their part and have agreed to extend the small business program, which only takes a 15% cut from devs making under $1 million for three years. And they're also setting up a $100 million fund for small developers, 30 million of which is going to the lawyers. Well, that's only right. They work hard. <laughs> The App Store's anti-steering rules were just one part of the Epic case, so we'll have to see how this settlement modifies that trial's final ruling. We're praying we can see naked banana men on our iPhones again soon. I've missed them. And Microsoft has thrown owners of older PCs a bone by adding Windows 11 support for a single Intel 7th gen CPU, the 7820HQ, and no first gen Ryzen processors oh, at yeah. all. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Wait, that's not a whole bone. No. That's like a bone shard. It's like some marrow. But there's some actual good news. Redmond says you will be able to install Windows 11 on pretty much any hardware you want to, provided you're ready to deal with the potential technical problems involving drivers and firmware and all that good stuff. So yeah, Microsoft still isn't being the nicest it could be, but at least Asus will be releasing updated Windows 11 compatible BIOSes for its 200 series motherboards. And the new Windows 11 health checkup shouldn't tell you that your PC is incompatible anymore when it actually is compatible. The thing, that was gaslighting. Gatekeeping. Now it's time for Quick Bits, brought to you by iFixit. They told me they want to make sure that you have the right bit for the job because they care about you and your bits. iFixit has a repair kit for any situation so you can take apart all your electronics. There's the Mako with 64 small bits, the Mahi with 48 large bits, or the Manta, who's got all 112 bits. In a Quick Bit, it's crazy. Watch out for that one. Uh, each kit includes iFixit's famous swivel knurled screwdriver thing that I love, contained in a magnetic enclosed case with laser cut foam. Get yours at ifixit.com slash techlinked. Life is confusing and complicated and the world's going to sh Have you considered quick bits? Is it coming to cream? What? TSMC has confirmed it plans to raise chip manufacturing prices by 10 or 20%, just like they promised to do last year. Uh. Because why would they want a chip shortage to end? That's like expecting a dam operator to just let out some water because people are thirsty. What about the fish in there? Yeah, you gotta sell the fish to the, at the fish market. This is a sea of silicon. It's a bad analogy. <laughs> Western Digital has been caught secretly making its storage drives worse. Again, ah. swapping out the NAND modules in its budget SSD offerings, which degrades performance by as much as 50%. That's half, math. That's a lot of the pie. WD follows Crucial and Samsung doing the same thing, although to be fair, Samsung's NAND swap is more of a side grade. But still, why won't they leave working class SSDs alone? They're having enough of a hard time as it is. It's like it's touching down. It's rude. 
It looks more certain than ever that Microsoft will soon be releasing the sequel to its disappointing dual display Surface Duo Android phone. Following images that leaked earlier this year, a related device on Geekbench has appeared with a Snapdragon 888 and 8GB of RAM. Damn, that's a lucky phone. Woo! Those are specs that would address the first one's primary failing, which was slow performance. But the Snapdragon 888 is already a bit out of date. 888 Plus is starting to show up in phones, so here we were thinking this was the last one. Yeah, they're just gonna keep making chips, I guess. I bet you can make one more. <laughs> Netflix is already rolling out a test of its long-rumored gaming service, but only in Poland, where people actually watch their horrible reality shows. I'm just making that up. I don't know whether they watch them or not. Love Island? I don't get it. No more. Turns out the add-on gaming perk is not cloud-based, as many assumed. Existing Netflix subscribers will instead get, e get free access to certain Android games, starting with a pair of Stranger Things titles. No way! Oh, that's cool! It's so uh, on-brand, you know? I'm totally not going to cancel my sub now. And the hacker behind the recent attack on T-Mobile that saw 50 million user accounts compromised has come forward in an interview with the Wall Street Journal. The hacker, who calls himself John Bins, John John's been in your data, uh, <laughs> called T-Mobile security awful and claimed the government has tried to convince him to buy missiles from the FBI and has attacked him with psychic ed and energy weapons. Yeah. This is turning. Uh, the FBI denied Bins was being investigated before zapping reporters with ray guns, so I guess we'll never know what really happened. What are you hiding? You know... <laughs> no. <laughs> I was gonna make a joke about the flat earth tilting and us all falling off. Uh, but we'll do that on Monday when this show returns, because this episode's over, so come back then for more tech news. Oh!